Welcome Japanese woodblock print collectors and enthusiasts. This is the start of a new series of videos I plan to make on ukiyo-e artists. Who they were, what genres they focused on, and what were some of their best or most well-known prints. And I thought I'd start with a very popular ukiyo-e artist, Tsukioka Yoshitoshi. So who was Yoshitoshi? He was born in Edo in 1839 to a wealthy merchant family. At the age of five, he became interested in art, and when he was 11, he became the student of Kuniyoshi and was given the name Yoshitoshi. Kuniyoshi taught his students to draw from real life, to create literal images. Here are some of Kuniyoshi and Yoshitoshi's sketches, so you can see some examples. In addition, Yoshitoshi also learned the elements of Western drawing techniques and perspective through studying Kuniyoshi's collection of foreign prints and engravings. He became recognized as the most important student of Kuniyoshi, and by the age of 30, he was considered one of the best woodblock artists in Japan. In fact, he's considered, considered by many to be the last great ukiyo-e master coming out of the Meiji era. And if you see this chart, most of the old masters were finished by the time the Meiji era began. Yoshitoshi bridged that gap between the old feudal Japan and the new modern Japan. He was a very prolific artist, and it is estimated that over 10,000 designs were produced by him. There's no way I can go through 10,000 designs, but I do have about 50 or so of his print designs queued up to show you. The prints are going to be mostly in chronological order, starting with the Battle of the Cats and Mice from 1859. I'm thinking that since Kuniyoshi was known to be a cat lover, maybe Yoshitoshi did this series as an homage to his master. Next, some prints from the famous Chushingura or 47 Ronin story. Every ukiyo-e artist had to design at least one series of prints around this famous story. In 1863, when Shogun Iemochi did his famous uh, trip from Tokyo to Kyoto, Yoshitoshi was one of the 16 artists uh, commissioned to create some prints of the uh, processional. And these are from pl famous places along the Tokaido. And we can see he's really becoming a master of composition and perspective. It looks like he's employing some of Hiroshige's perspective techniques of having a large object in the foreground. Okay, now in 1865, we get into the territory that Yoshitoshi was famous or infamous for, his first major series on ghosts. It was called 100 Ghost Stories of China and Japan, but only 26 of the 100 prints were ever published. The series was based upon a game where scary stories are told by candlelight. This series foreshadows many more scary and gruesome designs to come. Also in 1865, we have biographies of modern men. Look at the evolution from his 1860-47 Ronin series and the stiff depiction of the characters to this much more realistic, albeit cartoonish design. Here we can really see how expertly he handles the samurai warrior genre. Around this time, he realized there was a demand for more sensational images, and he had the morbid sensibility and creativity to deliver them. Here are some prints from his 28 famous murders with verse, where he leaves us with some truly unforgettable and bloody designs. These next prints are from his 1868 series, A Selection of 100 Warriors. It was one of his first major series, but only 65 of the 100 prints were ever published. Now, I don't want you to think that Yoshitoshi is all about blood, death, and ghosts. So let's do a palate cleanser and admire his restaurant series called Beautiful Women and Fancy Dishes in Tokyo. Yoshitoshi gives us a tour of both the detailed restaurant architecture and the beautiful geisha that worked in them. In 1875, Yoshitoshi got a job with a newspaper, the Yubin Hoichi Shinbun. 
He was hired to illustrate a variety of sensational news subjects in full color. They used to slip these prints in as supplements for newspaper subscribers. Also at this time in his life, he was having problems with his finances that caused him to become depressed and he suffered a mental breakdown. His mistress at that time, Okoto, sold her possessions to support him. And at one point they had to burn the floorboards from the house for warmth. In 1876, his mistress sold herself to a brothel to help him pay his debts. And a year later, he took up with a new mistress, the geisha Oraku, and she also sold her clothes and possessions to support him. And when they separated after a year, she also went to work at a brothel. In 1877, the Satsuma Rebellion happened. Here are a few triptychs from that period. I have to do a video on that civil war. Anyway, Yoshitoshi excelled at war prints and his work was back in demand. Around this time, he also designed one of my favorite series, A Collection of Desires. This featured images of beautiful women who are desiring something. This one is called I want to cancel my subscription. This one, I really want to go to sleep. This one, I want to travel abroad. And finally, my favorite of a woman at a restaurant. I want someone to decide for me. In 1880, Yoshitoshi met a former geisha with two children. They were married in 1884. And one of her children became Yoshitoshi's student and was known as Tsukioka Kogyo. He specialized in prints and paintings of the No Theater. In 1880, Yoshitoshi did another light-hearted Bijinga or Beautiful Woman series called 24 Hours at Shimbashi and Yanagibashi, where he counts down a 24-hour period and gives us scenes of beauties and what they're doing. It's an interesting chronicle of the daily life of a geisha in the 1800s. In 1883, Yoshitoshi designed one of his most famous triptychs, Fujiwara no Yasumasa plays the flute by moonlight. It depicts a bandit trying to attack Yasumasa, who is playing the flute, but the bandit can't move because of the beautiful music. This print sold for over $40,000 at Christie's in 2023. Another famous print around the same time is The Lonely House on Adachi Moor. This vertical diptych shows us the famous Japanese folktale of an evil hag who drank the blood of unborn children. This design is far less valuable, but very iconic and emotionally powerful. One interesting diptych series that was published in 1886 is called New Selection of Eastern Brocade Pictures. Once again, he called on historical events, mythology, and popular stories for his subject matter. I don't know about you, but I much prefer the diptych format, which is two sheets of paper, as compared to the triptych format. It seems like a much more reasonable canvas for storytelling. Okay, so now we're going to jump into Yoshitoshi's best known and gorgeously conceived series, 100 Aspects of the Moon. This series was published in batches between 1885 and 1892. The prints depict various aspects of the moon. So the moon is pictured in each print, similar to Hokusai's 100 views of Mount Fuji, where Mount Fuji is worked into each design. Yoshitoshi used the themes of Japanese and Chinese anecdotes, historical events, and mythology. So you'll see everything, including famous warriors, notable women, demons, and ghosts, as interpreted through Yoshitoshi's imagination. Prints in this series are still quite affordable, ranging from under $1,000 to $5,000 or so. Plus, you can get reprints of this series for much less. And here are a couple of my favorites. Moon of Pure Snow at Asano River, showing the daughter, Chikako, jumping to her death to try and get her father released from jail. And this print called Moon and Smoke showing a fireman holding the flag or standard of his fire brigade watching a blaze in Tokyo. From this, we'll go to a series of 32 prints called 32 Aspects of Customs and Manners. 
it's another series that shows his ability to realistically portray women from different social classes involved in everyday activities. Special attention was paid to the clothing, the hair, and the features. And the series was printed with embossing and burnishing and shading techniques, showing us the technical skill of the carvers and printers. It was said that Yoshitoshi was very involved in the printing and insisted on the highest quality results. I, I love this waitress print. Look at the detail in the fabric of her kimono and the frazzled expression on her face. Now we are getting to the end of Yoshitoshi's career. New Forms of 36 Ghosts was the last major series he designed. Once again, he drew from old Japanese and Chinese folk tales or from Japanese mythology. Yoshitoshi had always believed in ghosts and the supernatural. He was even convinced that he'd seen some ghosts. Check out the sketch for his print, The Heavy Basket. You can see how he sketched his designs with a red pencil first and then refined it with black ink. Yoshitoshi depended on his students to help him with his print production. It was said that he had several hundred students over his lifetime. A few of Yoshitoshi's students went on to become influential artists themselves, like Toshikata and Toshihide. Tragically, in his last years, he had mental problems again and was admitted to mental hospital. He left the hospital in May 1892. He never returned home and died in a rented room three weeks later from a cerebral hemorrhage. He was only 53 years old. Yoshitoshi's death poem reads, Holding back the night with its increasing brilliance, the summer moon. And I have to agree with John Stevenson, author of the book Yoshitoshi, 100 Aspects of the Moon, when he wrote, Yoshitoshi's courage, vision, and force of character gave ukiyo-e another generation of life and illuminated it with one last burst glory. I hope you've enjoyed this brief artist profile of Yoshitoshi. Please like and subscribe and happy collecting.